Hello everybody and welcome to another Transformers third party video. In today's video we're taking a look at the fans hobby NB16 Lightning Eagle aka their take on the UK exclusive Thunderclash. This product brings back glorious memories of when I used to visit Woolworths which was a store based in the UK and it was fabulous. We used to have lots of generation 1.5 and generation 2 figures and they were amazing absolutely loved going in there it's the first time i ever saw the g2 megatron tank fans hobby please release that sometime soon now unlike the original thunderclash now we do have a combined form uh, which which is a nice a nice little addition obviously it's not exactly canon but uh, it does the job nonetheless. It's because it's based on their Power Baser figure. The box art especially really does bring back those retro nostalgic vibes, especially when we take a look at the back of the box. Collect them all, fanshobby.com. Uh, we've got a quick information section here about Fans Hobby themselves, and we've got uh, various different figures on there. <laughs> it, it, it looks incredible, doesn't it? And here we have him out of his plastic prison. Now, Fans Hobby have already said that they're doing the Machine Wars Optimus Prime as well. They have already shown pictures of that. And I believe it's actually being released very, very shortly, if not already at the time of this video. And that's obviously based on this, much like the Machine Wars Optimus Prime was based on the original Thunderclash figure, but absolutely, adore the gold that they've used uh, this is just 90s screaming straight in your face i uh, love these two big jet launchers on the top there we've got the additional uh, hooded section on the front of the truck as well as this really nice vibrant pink windshield uh, rolls really really nicely and just taking the trailer piece off of the cab. We've got these two launchers on top. Again, this gold is extremely garish. Thankfully, no gold plastic <laughs> being used. Unfortunately, uh, gold plastic does have its uh, drawbacks. So I'm glad that they've used a normal plastic and kind of painted it up. Now these are projectiles and they really do fire. There is a lock on either side of the projectiles, so you can lock them in safely. But uh, I mean, these really do fire. We'll press the button. <laughs> A launch with uh, some true velocity. Uh, we have his gun on the top. Uh, you just slide this peg down, and it pegs into the top of that trailer. Nice. Solid piece, we have the handle which can be brought down so you can wield it as a robot. We have these launchers, a uh, bring up this section here to attach them to the top of the cab. We can bring that piece back down. That's just gonna tuck inside like this. And again, like we got with the gun, there's a handle option which we can bring up so we can hold both of these as weapons as well look at that fabulous really nice vibrant truck mode we've got the smokestacks there in that chrome and a really gorgeous contrast in colors I love the insignia on the roof uh, no obvious tampo printing. I know that's something a lot of fans disliked about some of the earlier fans' hobby products was the tampo prints. Uh, everything looks to be as it should. I, you know what? I really hope we get to see more Turbo Masters as well. I believe that's what these were called back in the day. They were the Turbo Masters, I think, around Europe. Uh, maybe like France, etc. They were called Rocket Masters or something 
similar along those lines. If this is your first time taking a look at this particular uh, mold from Fans Hobby, just to give you an idea of scale, here he is alongside MP10. It's definitely a masterpiece size product. Uh, I just love that garishness. The transformation for the most part remains the same. Uh, only real difference being as we now have this detachable roof panel. Uh, this is what we would get with our standard prime figure. And it's just a matter of uh, transforming these individual sections back up. Uh, all of the hinges are uh, incredibly stiff, but at the same time, uh, no real fear of breaking anything at all. Uh, everything is solid and exceptionally well made. Uh, Fans Hobby, uh, one of my favorite brands on the market. Uh, they have exceptional customer service. If there is anything that ever goes wrong, uh, they, they're always uh, quick to respond. And that's something you don't always get from third party companies. So move these down, bring these open. Look at these big, chunky feet. <laughs> they look awesome, don't they? Let's bring that out. And flip that out and bring that heel spur out and bring that down. You can bring these wheel panels in. These are on a compressing hinge. So just uh, slide that in and push. Bring your hip skirts around and down to the front. We have this front panel piece that's going to come down. We can bring up Thunderclash's head. Uh, my particular head, well, that's incredibly stiff. That's a really tight fit. Uh, but this flap folds into the chest. And uh, while this chest panel piece is open, just push the grill piece down. There's another tab here. Allows this to come in. It's going to push and lock into position. We can then flip the grill down and the waist is going to collapse. These can come down. This can come down. Uh, as you can see, we've got the arm, which can come out, rotate, flip, and we're going to remove the fist like so. Bring that out. Close that off. That chest piece we removed is going to come straight back in and that's going to push and tab in Last but not least, we can open up this tab at the back of the legs. There's a button just on the side here that's going to pull up. And you know that it's locked into position when this is lined up. And we just push those tabs on the back of the legs. And whoever in his robot mode, this is actually how I'm probably going to have him stored and displayed. Don't get me wrong, I absolutely adore what the PowerBaser version of this does and how it looks. But this is... Uh, this is kind of my definitive version of how he used to be. This is how I remember him. He's got that kind of simplicity. He's got those uh, soft lines and he's got uh, a truck hanging off him. Okay, yes, he is missing uh, some wings that we got with the original. Uh, we'll include a link if you hit the information bar at the top. That will take you through to a bootleg that I had uh, back a few years ago now, and uh, that was the nearest I ever got to having uh, Thunderclash. So uh, having a figure like this in hand is just magnificent. Really looking forward to their take on Machine Wars Prime as well. And that's got a different head, etc. Uh, love to have those two displayed alongside one another. Although that being said, I may have this placed in my display cabinet alongside the likes of uh, kind of Victory Sabre, etc. We need a masterpiece Diatlas. That's going to be the next thing that I really like. Uh, nobody's really delivered a uh, masterpiece kind of cartoon aesthetic Diatlas. But yes, this is their take on Thunderclash. And uh, he is 
fabulous. Right now, the base mode isn't perfect, but it's a ruddy good effort, if you ask me. Considering what we're working with, considering this is just a remold and retool of their existing products, I think it's enough of a nod to the original product, uh, but we'll see. Let me know what you think uh, once this guy is all transformed up. So uh, these side panels uh, just unfold and they come down, slide these legs apart. This uh, particular panel here is gonna drop down and go into this void and each leg has an extension which can be pulled and locked into place. And much like we have with the smaller legs, if you want to disengage this locking mechanism, you have a button on each side. I kind of what, like what they did with MP10. You have a heel spare on each side, which can come out. It's gonna slide outwards like so, and come all the way down. And then this section here comes out. And if we were going to bot mode, we'd uh, give it a uh, kind of right angle where we'd bring this up down and around like so. But for base mode, we're gonna have this flat like so. Make sure the panel pieces are closed on the feet. Do that for both sides. And you want to uh, spread these legs and angle the feet so that these are gonna be balanced like this. Make sure that these hip skirts are up on both sides. Make sure that these hip skirts are up and the top, upper torso is going to rotate so we have this panel here on the front. These are going to open up on both sides. This top panel is gonna come up and over and just position on the other side of this platform. The head is gonna lift up and as we lift this up, the platform panel is gonna drop down. The arms are gonna come through and rotate. The head is then gonna come down at a right angle and then with the arms up, this panel is then gonna bend on this hinge here so that the head is now hidden away inside this void. And with this new positioning, we can bring these panels in, push and lock those in on either side. The wheels are gonna come out like so. This panel is gonna come up and over on both sides. Rotate that panel around. And bring that back over so that the wheel is now on the rear. Push those tires back in. Make sure that this panel here is slid all the way up on those legs. And then we can just open up like so. And then on this hinge, that's gonna come up. And we're gonna use this as one of the standing bases. Make sure that these arms are straight. They're just gonna sit across the top of the platform. We've got some handles on either side of these shoulders. We can bring those out. And then making sure both of the alternative hooks are down, these should he says, now slide in to one another, like so. These panels here are going to lift up. And where we've now got these grooves, those are gonna slide over the grooves on those arms so that we're left with something that looks like that. And if you choose, there's also room on top here to mount his rifle, which I know, okay, it's not perfect by any means, but uh, considering what they used to do uh, with the base formers, etc. back in G1. Uh, we used to have uh, the likes of uh, Motor Master and Hotspot did turn into like a uh, base as well. Uh, I think this, this is actually pretty decent. Uh, considering especially what the original Thunder Clash base mode did kind of look like, it was the side panels of the truck folding down and then front panel as well. I'll include a, a picture over here. But now I think it's a pretty decent nod considering the size of these figures. Uh, I think I may even have this displayed up 
like this. Uh, I don't know. I, I actually really kind of like it. And I like him in that particular bot mode as well. He looks armed and ready and it just looks like 90s tack, which is fantastic. And now he does, of course, have his combined mode as well. I'm not going to go through the entire transformation for the combined mode because it is the same as what we get with the other combined modes, albeit we take off that chest plate. Uh, so I'll take a look. If I encounter any problems at all, then of course I will cover them. But if I don't, then uh, I'll see you when we get him fully combined. And here we have him fully transformed up into his combined mode. Uh, yes, okay, it's not uh, spot on. Like I said, it's based off of their own kind of ideas, based off their power baser, kind of a what if he was uh, a power master as opposed to a turbo master. I love those rocket launchers on the shoulders there. Mine does still have that tendency to lean backwards. Uh, I do particularly like the modifications that they've done with the second batch of power bases and uh, they've carried on through their Thunder Clash, uh, where this section here is on a hinge. It comes down and drops back in to the torso. That's something that wasn't included with my version ones. Uh, the legs slide down, fills out nicely. Uh, maybe could have done with a slightly wider or longer foot base just to kind of offset that heavy backpack section. But all in all, he's a good looking base former. And again, getting up close and personal, where we've got uh, parts on this figure that we don't particularly uh, necessarily need. Uh, there's actually storage for his gun on the side as well. We've got that chest shield section. We've got the alternative large head there. A really big foot uh, print there. Uh, maybe better for me, I think, uh, possibly if I drop these down and have them like they were in the base mode. That does still give you a very kind of wide. I don't know. I don't know. I think it's just uh, finding something that works. I may not have the uh, chest piece in completely flush because it does seem to be lifting up slightly on the neck. So it suggests to me that I haven't quite slid that down in there properly. Uh, but all in all, really nice figure. I do like this curve section kind of slims them down slightly there we go that is the base former version of thunder clash uh, personally i do prefer the smaller version uh, kind of more true to the source material but that being said this is still an exceptionally good piece and uh, a very welcome addition to my collection. Now, I do have the MB-11 God Bomber to review. So if you look out for that one, uh, I'll do a full combined uh, video alongside the Power Baser so we can get a nice comparison between these. Uh, I will include a link in the description below where I got this over at Fans Hobby. And uh, yeah, here's a gorgeous looking figure. The it's just the colours, I think the colours are garishly intriguing. Very satisfactory. Uh, we can unhook these as well. Let's not forget that these can be used as weapons if you see fit or if you're limited to shelf space. Until next time, myself and Thunderclash, aka Lightning Eagle, are goodbye.